Hello everybody, Star Urk here, and welcome into part 2 of the Urk First Batman finale. I'm going to link my entire Urk First Batman playlist at the top of the screen, which includes part 1 if you haven't seen that yet. Like I've done in all my Urk First Batman videos, I'm going to give a brief overview of what happens in part 2, but I've also written a more detailed outline, which is linked in the description down below. I wrote a script for part 1, but this one is more like reading a book. Thanks so much to all these people for your suggestions, and let's get started. Part 2 starts out with a flashback to Harley Quinn's childhood, so first up is her father, Nicholas Quinzel. Like I mentioned in Part 1, he worked for the original Joker as a bodyguard. His hair is the dog show winners from Series 16, that head is a Joker goons from the Joker steamroller set, his torso is an owl post workers from Harry Potter, but I replaced the hands with white ones for gloves, and those legs are Kingsley's from the second Harry Potter CMF series. Next up is young Harley. One night, she follows her father and sneaks into one of Joker's meetings. She watches the meeting from an air vent, and she's mesmerized by the way Joker holds court. That night, Harley realizes she doesn't want to serve the Joker one day like her father expects. She wants to be the Joker one day. She keeps sneaking into meetings until one night, a rival gang shows up to one of them. Batman arrives shortly to try to stop the violence. He attempts to protect Joker and his bodyguards, but they're caught in the crossfires. Harley's just a kid and she doesn't understand what really happened, so she blames Batman for her father's death. She follows the air ducts out of the building and runs away as fast as she can. Her hair is the babysitters from series 16, that head is Gabrielle's from Harry Potter, her torso is Maisie's from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, and those legs are the aliens from the first Disney CMF series. Back in the present, Batman tries to find Robin before the police do. He believes Robin was manipulated into helping Harley escape, but the police think otherwise. He's using the new Batman cowl, the head underneath is Thorns from The Hobbit, his shoulder armor is Jafar's, that cape is a standard Batman one, his torso is from the Lego Batman movie, but I gave him Black Widow's arms from the Avengers accessory pack, that belt is from the Inferno Squad battle pack, and his legs are crosshairs from the Bad Batch. Batman recruits his old friend Catwoman to help look for Robin. That face slash hairpiece is Hermione's from the Chamber of Secrets, underneath that is a plain reddish brown head, her torso is from Yaz from Camp Cretaceous, but I gave her Rolf's arms and hands from the Muppets CMF series. That belt is from the Lego Batman movie, and her legs are Batmans from the DC CMF series. Meanwhile, Jim Gordon and Harvey Bullock also search for Robin. Gordon's hair is Carl's from Up, that head is Baxter Stockman's from TMNT, and his torso and legs are the film noir detectives from series 25, but I replaced the hands on the torso with reddish brown ones. Bullock's hat is Alan Grant's from Jurassic World Dominion, his head is Muldoon's from the first Jurassic Park, that torso is Kevin's from The Office, and his legs are Loki's from the first Marvel CMF series with plain, dark brown hips. So Harley brings Robin to her apartment in Bloodhaven. He wakes up after a while and thanks Harley for giving him the push he needed. Clearly the chemicals have affected his brain and have made him go full Joker. Harley suggests having a grand debut to introduce the brand new Joker to Gotham and to Batman. Basically, she stole Robin from Batman, and she wants to rub it in Batman's face. However, she lets Joker plan the whole thing to make him feel in charge. Harley's hair is the Sugar Fairies from Series 23. Her head, arms, and legs are Elastigirls. That hood is Jack's from Hidden Side, and her torso is Red She-Hulk's. Joker comes up with a plan for his big debut. He and Harley will crash the upcoming charity ball for Gotham Orphanage. This will give him a large audience, including Bruce. His hair is from the Lego City downtown set from last year. That head is from Crazy the Skulkin from Ninjago. His torso is T'Challa Star-Lords from the first Marvel CMF series, but I gave him white hands, and those legs are the crayons from the Lego Movie 2 CMF series. Batman and Catwoman have no luck finding Robin. Selina wants Bruce to attend the charity ball to take his mind off things for one night. He doesn't want to go, but Selina promises she'll keep looking for Robin while Bruce is at the ball, which by the way is a masquerade ball being held on a rooftop venue in downtown Gotham. To build Bruce in his ball attire, I use the Spooky Boy's hair from series 16. That head is Mr. Incredibles from the first Disney CMF series. I wish I had this Winter Soldier figure, because I think that head would fit Bruce better. Either way, he lost the beard, because he did clean up a little before the ball. Anyway, I got his torso and legs from Happy Hogan, but I replaced the arms on the torso with penguins from the Lego Batman movie. Before Joker's big reveal, Harley sneaks into the ball and confronts Bruce. You took my father from me, Harley tells Bruce so I took someone from you. To build this version of Harley, I used Black Canary's hair from the second Lego Batman movie CMF series. Her head is still Elastigirl's. 
That torso is Narcissa Malfoy's, but I gave her Bellatrix Lestrange's arms from the Battle of Hogwarts set and black hands. And then she's using a plain black skirt. Then Joker crashes the ball and he grabs the giant check of donations for the orphanage. All the guests, including Bruce, leave the event. A few minutes later, Bruce returns as Batman, hoping to snap Dick out of Harley's spell. He says Harley is just using him, but Harley denies this. Harley tries attacking Batman, but he pushes her away. She loses her balance and falls off the rooftop. The people below see her body and think Batman killed her on purpose. Both in shock, Batman and Joker flee the scene. This Joker minifigure is using the same hair and head as before, but his torso and legs are Mr. Knight's from the second Marvel CMF series, and those arms are Sensei Wu's from the Lego Ninjago movie CMF series. Oh, and that check piece is from The Office set. Bruce can't believe what he's done. He isolates himself in the Batcave, thinking Dick is too far gone to save. However, he's lured back out by Joker seeking revenge on him. Joker has kidnapped four of Bruce's friends, Jim Gordon, Barbara Gordon, Lucius Fox, and Selina Kyle. Each one of them is in a different corner of the city with a bomb strapped to them. The bombs are set to go off in one hour, so Bruce can only save one person. To build Unmasked Batman, I took the cowl and head off the figure I showed you earlier and replaced them with Hulk's hair from Spidey and his amazing friends and the angry clone head. I've already shown you Jim and Selina in this video, but here's how to build Barbara and Lucius. Barbara's hair is Ariel's, that head is Valkyrie's, her torso is the babysitters from series 16 but backwards and with medium nougat hands. I decided to keep the arms to make it look like she's wearing a long sleeve shirt under her short sleeve one. And then her legs are the downhill skiers from series 8. The hair for Lucius is from Percival Graves from the first Harry Potter CMF series. His head is more dose from Multiverse of Madness. That torso is from the newest Bruce Banner figure but I gave him medium brown hands and those legs are Jays from the Lego Ninjago movie CMF series. Now that I've shown you all the minifigures, I'll just talk through the ending. Instead of choosing one of his friends, Batman confronts Joker in his hideout. I go into more detail in the outline linked in the description, but to cut to the chase, Batman convinces Joker to deactivate the bombs. Batman apologizes for all his mistakes and leaves. Soon after, the police arrive. They handcuff Joker, who doesn't even resist. At the police station, Batman reveals his identity to Gordon and turns himself in for killing Harley. Gordon warns Bruce that he'll most likely be labeled insane and thrown in Arkham. Bruce says he's counting on it. After many tests and hearings, Bruce is brought to Arkham and put in the cell next to Joker. Hey Dick, he says. Wanna talk? He knows Dick isn't gone completely. After all, he deactivated the bombs. And now, Bruce will be right there whenever Dick is ready to come back out. Alright everybody, that's going to do it for this video, but before I go, I just want to thank you all so much for watching my Irk vs Batman videos over the last 3 years plus. It really means a lot to me that you supported the series and suggested characters and left such kind comments. I really, really appreciate it. I also want to thank my brother once again for making the awesome thumbnail for this video, and again, make sure to check the description down below for a more detailed outline of part 2. There's even a tease in there about a character people have wanted me to make for a long time now, and I will pay that tease off eventually. Anyway, if you have any suggestions for videos I should make in the future, please let me know down below and I'll give you a shout out if I use your idea. Anyway, come back on Tuesday for an important video. See you then.